Did y'all know that I'm a racist? Because I've often been criticized and been called a racist because I often will bring up videos that demonstrates someone in America being racist. Now, I want you to think about something for a second. The identity of a country is based on the identity of the people and the policies of the people. Therefore, if the people in the policy shows an ingrained racism, does that not make the country racist? It may not mean for everybody, but oftentimes there is racism ingrained in us so deep that we may not even see it. And every now and then, as in the example of this first video I'm going to show you, it comes out. No, sit down. Sit down. Brianna, sit down. No, she's not. Bri Y'all are the rudest people I've ever seen in my life. Close those doors. Close the doors now. Close the doors. Nick, close the doors. Yeah, I can. You people are being so rude to not listen to this speech. It was my fault that we missed it in the program. Look who's leaving all the black people. Uh -huh. It's not my audio, it's the video. He comes back. You should be sitting down. You should be sitting down and listening to this speech. So this was a graduation ceremony in Decatur, Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta, Georgia, which is where I'm from. You know, Atlanta, Georgia, the city so too busy to hate. That's the motto. But as we see the city that's too busy to hate, there are still people who, when they get frustrated, the real them comes out. It's kind of like they say that when you get drunk, then their truth comes out. Well, when this woman got frustrated, her truth actually came out. And what's interesting, and you know what, I'm not even going to explain it. Let me let this other young lady who was there explain a little portion of it. She named only black people. She didn't say, oh, look at the Caucasians leaving. Look at the Indians leaving. She said blacks. Now, although I know the demographics of the school in question here, I thought it was better for you to hear it from one of the students there who noticed and said that there were Caucasian students who left because actually in the first video, if you look closely, the first person to get up and walk out the door that on camera was actually a Caucasian young girl. So she didn't name them. And this school also has an Indian, a good, decent sized Indian population who also got up and left. She didn't name them. Her focus went solely on the black students and parents who got up and walked out during the ceremony because she wanted the valedictorian to be able to make his speech because she made a mistake. And there that's 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 what she should have tried to do was try to get the valedictorian to be able to make his speech. But there was definitely a much better way of going about it instead of yelling and screaming at these at these kids and their parents. But of course, her job has been threatened, so she had to come make an apology. And Christians, you should be pissed at her apology. Proper attention. It was not a statement of racism. It was just my frustration. And, you know, when I said it, I told my husband it felt like the devil was in the house because it didn't even sound like me. You know, I know the devil got to be sitting somewhere saying, why is it that every time these humans just do what they normally do, they got to blame me? I mean, the audacity of this woman not to take responsibility for her action. Now, she is a school principal. School principals one of the moral lessons that they're supposed to teach children is to take responsibilities for their action. Yet this woman clearly demonstrated that seed of racism that is just embodied in her because we live in a society that no matter how you look at it, you watch enough news, you read enough, go online enough, you walk around enough, you talk to enough people and racism just kind of moves its way into your consciousness. But at no point does she take responsibility, but she wants to blame the devil. Oh, the devil's in the house. 
And that's why I made them statements because that really wasn't me. It was you. It was the devil that is in your mind, which is just you. Now, I'm not going to drone on about this. I think you all can identify what was happening in this whole situation and what the reality is on your own. But I want you to watch this last video, please. Hey, did, what, did, what did Asher tell you? Black people are mean. Black people are mean? Yeah. Why? Because why? It's just so. They're just so, they're mean? Yeah. No, they're not. Yes, you are. No, they're not. They're nice. They're not. You're going to have mean people and, and white people and black people and brown people. They're going to be mean people in all colors. And there's there's nice people in all colors as well. Well, black people are bad? No, black pe not all black people are bad. No. No, and not all white people are bad. Not all brown people are bad. That's a blue jay. Yes, sir. Hey, stay focused. Look, and there's a red bird. <laughs> Speaking of staying focused. So, listen. They're not bad, okay? Not every, not their, no. You okay? Now, that was one of the most perfect examples <clears throat> of how racism <clears throat> is taught to us at a very young age. How the statements of another kid, and whoever Asher is, need to have a conversation. They need to have a conversation with Asher as well to find out why he has this paradigm in his mind or her mind. I don't know if Asher's a boy or a girl. But this child was taking Asher's word without experience and determining at that age that all black people are bad. Thankfully, he had a mother who was willing to set him down or would talk to him and convince him in a way that he would understand that black people are not all bad, that white people aren't all bad, brown people aren't all bad, but they're not all good either. That basically she was planting the seed that each person should be judged based on their own actions and character. Now, I do think she missed an opportunity because he is a little kid and evidently she got some attention problems too. He saw the bluebird and he was fascinated by the bluebird. And then there was a red bird. And she could have used the fact that those are two different color birds, but they're both birds. They both eat, they both feed, they both have babies, they both take care of their babies, they both build nests, they both are pretty much the same, just got different color feathers. I think she had a great opportunity there, but she was fascinated by the birds herself. But this just shows that even that lady who we saw, the principal, somewhere in her life, these mentalities were placed, these ideas were placed in her mind where she started to think a certain way concerning black people. She has a certain mentality towards Asian people. Most of us do. I remember having an aunt who told me, well, I still got that aunt. She told me when I was very young that she don't trust white people. She would never trust any white person, period. And thankfully, by the time she said that to me, I was old enough to realize, well, I got white friends and I trust them. So as I grew older, I realized that her coming out of segregation and, being, and growing up as an adult in Jim Crow laws, that those things created her ideas concerning people. And so therefore, she just doesn't trust white people. And it didn't matter that we were now in the early 80s. She was just still not going to trust white people. It's ingrained in her. To this day, I guarantee if I were to go and ask her, she would probably say the same thing. Which is so odd because her side, her branch of the family have engaged with more white people than anybody else as far as the grandkids. But anyway, racism is definitely something that is taught. It is not something that we're born with. And if we want to change that aspect of it, one I know people like to say I might be racist because I bring these subject matters out. One, we have to face those situations and face those subject matters and deal with them and not just talk about them, but uh, change policies so that it doesn't continue to be taught. Change policies so that it's not continuously seen. We shouldn't see the Confederate being acknowledged in a heroic f format, but they should only be recognized in museums and, his and history books. But we shouldn't have statues and streets and things like that named after them, whether they're good or bad, black or white. No racist should ever be honored. So always remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.